Hello and welcome, this is S-Tier Rank, and today I'm going to play some more Inscription Casey's mod. Let's go ahead and get a new run started. I think I'm going to go with the Raccoon deck um, one more time, at least, maybe twice, depending on how quickly this goes by. It's really interesting, I just need to uh, get good with it. So, let's give it a try. Um, let's see... I'm going to go totem battles, boss totems, no boss rares. I really kind of hate tipped skills, but fortunately I think I'm kind of needing it. Now to leave pricey pelts and smaller backpack. Um, I wonder if more difficult may be a better choice of the two. And then having like, say, pricey pelts turned on or something. Um, Single candle just sounds too hard, but yeah, let's go with that. And having three autumns still, I think, makes the most sense. Maybe we'll have a little bit of better luck. Okay. Ah, a cat and a beaver. Um, yeah, let's do it. Cat is so useful. Okay. So we could do a sigil swap and get the beaver's ability on the dire wolf pup, but I kind of feel like um, on a wolf cub, it may be more useful. So let's see, we could go to the wood carver instead. Um, but I would miss a chance at having our prospector meet up. And I don't think I'll have enough teeth to be able to trade for anything. So, let's see. Maybe instead of cat, we could put its sigil on the raccoon. And that would make it have some viability. Like, cat's interesting, but raccoon having that sigil on it would make it quite a bit more useful, I think. And we could focus on buffing the one raccoon as well instead of having to worry about possibly buffing the cat okay see raccoon's already here so we can get it going and uh, it can be serving us already okay um, in fact we could go ahead and get a squirrel and use the sacrifice to get our uh, beaver on the board and there we go okay all right coyote I don't think we're gonna have to worry about it but we'll see where this lands okay one of those bees should or actually maybe both of them will run in front and get killed so let's just see where it goes. There we go. It'll be a few extra turns, but we might edge it out and get just a tiny bit of excess damage. Um, dire wolf pup could be sacrificed and put down. And then the um, Cody as well. So let's just see what happens if we do that. There we go. Okay, dire wolf pup will grow up and that will be a decent amount of excess damage. Okay, good. Oh, a beehive. And it has airborne too. That's interesting. Okay, let's see now which way would head us to the wood carver. I think that heading to the wood carver may be our wisest decision to get us a totem started. Okay, now we have enough to uh, 
get our beaver down. So let's go ahead and go for that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we have a beehive. There we go. Adder will generate us a bee. Thank you, Adder. And uh, we should be able to get our dire wolf pup down now. So let's see. We can get our coyote as well. And we will get our dire wolf pup also. Oh, I should have done it the other way around instead of losing my dire wolf pup. Oopsie do. Um, we can just block damage until time comes. I'd like to get the excess if we can. There we go. Just one tooth, but every tooth counts, right? We'll take this, because I think the card finding ability may be useful. Oh, a bifurcated strike. Let's go with it. Maybe we'll get lucky and uh, find a good tribe to pair the head off with. Okay, a ringworm and a worker ant. So, and they're going to move with the rampager. So, who should we get? Raccoon could go down for saying and take out the ringworm. Kind of thinking that that might be a wise way to do it. I think in this pattern they might send out like a wolf cub or something. I forget what comes next. Oh, more worker ants. Okay. And um, we should now be able to get a <clears throat> dire wolf pup on the board. Okay. And that'll be that. Okay, we're about to have a problem with this many worker ants on the board, so I think we can put our coyote down and that will give us some power to uh, remove some of their strength from the board. There we go. Direwolf should make a good recovery um, points wise for us, and coyote taking out that other worker ant I think gets us set. I don't think that they can really cover from this, especially with me about to play the magpie. Alright. Nice. Okay, now we could head to the woodcarver. I might to take the magpie's abilities and put it on something else. Um, Perhaps either on the coyote or the beehive. Let's see what we get when we get up here. Hmm, possum and river snapper and the river otter. I'm not sure what family the raccoon falls into. We definitely have two canines here, an insect and a bird. Um and this would go in the reptile family. So, hmm, really need to have a family reference um, here, but I think we'll go with possum since it takes bone and we have the raccoon, it's helping us generate bone. So maybe it'll work out if we get this bifurcated strike. Ooh, if I put it on the canine, that'd be a lot of strength and we don't have any attacking insects yet, so I think it will go with the canine head. Okay. Now it's time for a sigil swap. And we could put the beaver's abilities on the dire wolf pup. Um, oh, and that would be so nice too, because with the totem, it's also going to give our dams... Um, extra strike ability so 
It'll be bifurcated strikes. Oh my goodness, that's going to be unreal. We're going to be kind of overpowered, I think. Hopefully I'll get a good opportunity to play those cards. It's actually a little bit dangerous to play here on the uh, angler, but maybe I can make it work. Let's get our... Hmm. So I say let's get our raccoon down, but... I could generate bone by sacrificing the smoke and that'd get our Cody on the board. So let's do that. Okay, and it has bifurcated strike as well, so that'll be five damage right away. Okay. Now, let's see, I think we should draw from this pile. And we get a beehive. Um, so the coyote is going to strike over here and over there, and that would leave the raccoon um, doing some damage, and that card being exposed. Um, in the next turn, the coyote would get us just about far enough along to win. So I, I don't see a problem here. I think it will go ahead and continue, and I'll use the scissors as well, if I absolutely have to. So there we go. Okay, now we have us a magpie. Um, awesome can get deployed, and I think that we're going to have enough damage that we're going to win, so nothing to worry about here. Yep. Alright, great. Okay, let's see, a beehive, an elk, and a kingfisher. I guess we'll go with the beehive, because if we have a fungi event, getting those combined up to generate more bees would be pretty impressive. Oh, a cave event. I wish I could see what's up above. Looks like a, in the middle, an item event. Okay, um, hmm. I guess we'll go with the direwolf pup with that bifurcated strike we'd be pretty formidable all right i don't think we need to go to the wood carver um we could go up this route and try to get a pack rat or we could even have two pack rats actually i don't think i have anything i want to sacrifice um but i kind of want the cave event so maybe i'll go here then here then to the cave event and we'll we'll double check before we go that way and commit to having to go to the sacrifice for the sigil Let's see how this match turns out. Okay, well, we got a beehive, and the elk fawn could hit that and get us a bee. And, um, or we could get our dire wolf pup in front of this um, possum. And it'll be able to contribute right away. And I think I'm... Oops. I do not want to do that. I think I'll go ahead and strive for that. Because that will be pretty powerful. And it'll be protected from the elk fawn. So let's start off with that. Okay. Now we can set up our beehive in front of the elk fawn that will come down and we have enough for the coyote to take out the raven egg oh it's bifurcated though so i put it in the wrong lane oopsie <laughs> my bad i should have been paying a little bit closer attention okay let's see I guess we could get the pack rat down because the raven egg's not going to do anything anyways. Here we go. Alright. We got a decent return on our item selection there too. Ooh, and a dire wolf pup with um, dam building. Okay. 
Not that we need it, but we had it. Okay, let's see. What would we do a sigil sacrifice with? Hmm. Let's see. Could have a raccoon that generates extra bone if we took the dire wolf butt, but it already has a sigil on it, so I don't think it's going to let us move it over. Um. Hmm. I don't see a clear winner there. Could get another pack rat and have a strong one. So I think I'll go with that since we have a cave event um, further up the road. Hey, right, there's a raccoon for us. Nice. Oh, I just saw there's a duplicate event up that other way. So unfortunately I'll miss that, but hopefully I'll stay rich with items. So beehive that we could park in front of the wolf cub. Um, I think that that could work, or we could play our frozen possum in front of him, and that would delay it for a little while until we can get something bifurcated over that way. And this raven egg is going to be moving around, so it doesn't really matter what I put where in that regard, so I think that we're just going to hold off until the next turn. Oh, now we have an alpha incoming. That's not good. Um, so let's see about getting that dire wolf pup on the board now. And um, if it's by your cage strike, it should be able to take out what's in front of it and the alpha. We don't have enough yet to put a coyote on the board, but we will soon enough. All right, you unlock my possum card. Okay. Another dire wolf pup. So, let's see. This one's going to take out most of the health on that raven. And it's going to attack forward to the possum's going to lose, unfortunately. Um, but I think we may be fine with what we have going on here. So, let's just continue forward. All right. Now the dire wolf should take out the raven egg and the wolf, and only the raven should be putting um, damage on the board. So we will put our Cody over there, and it'll get it in the next turn. All right. We almost have enough to play our second dire wolf pup. Um, in fact, we could, and we could see the damn ability to make sure it works the way we think it will. I think that we still have enough damage. Yep, you can see it. It's bifurcated, so it'll still apply, even though it's way off here in the corner. All right, cool. So next turn, it should start doing damage. Excellent. Wow, that's going to be a lot of power on the board. Um, okay, I think it works that nothing to adjust <laughs> that's some good excess okay I think this is either two of the kind or three sigils um, are the clear winners here Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen sigils. And for two of the kinds, we have quite a good spread. Um, the bird might be the thing that throws us off, but let's go with two of a kind. Surely we can meet that. Oh, I'm not sure. Wow. That was the worst possible way to do that. Okay then, I guess win some leads some, right? Well, 
on earth probably see pelts turned on while I'll have enough to get anything. A golden pelt would be great, but I'm guessing I won't be able to. Ah, wild bull. A porcupine and a rabbit. And this wild bull is waterborne too. That's not good. Um so we could get down the raccoon and then the beehive. Um I almost have enough to take on some other things, but I might have to cut that wild, <coughs> wild bull. That's gonna be a problem. Um so let's get our raccoon started. And um we'll get our beehive as well. And I mean we could go ahead and sacrifice them and get this guy on the board actually I think that it probably doesn't make much of a difference beehive isn't super useful um, at least not in this situation so maybe this will work out since we had bifurcated strike and double strike okay Alright, let's see. I may have to cut that card in the next turn. I think it might just be too big of a hit on us. However, we're gonna. Okay, I was gonna say, we're gonna lose our dire wolf because of the uh, sharp quills, but we narrowly avoided that defeat. Alright, what do we have? Can we get a golden pelt? Nope. Could get a wolf pelt, or we could wait a little bit longer. Um, I think I'll wait a little bit longer just in case. Ooh, corpse seeder on the canines. Um, well, that's tempting. Hmm. That would effectively make some powerful cards zero cost to get into play. So we have one, two, three cards that's applicable to, and if we get another one, that'd be pretty nice. But I don't know. This bifurcated strike is so good. I think I'll get this card just in case we see an opportunity with some other set um especially if i get like ouroboros or some other card that has let's see is it undying i forget the name of the one that um replaces it automatically all right do we want a powerful raccoon a direwolf pup that's been comboed up a beehive or let's see a pack rat I don't see the pack rat being totally worth combining. A raccoon for the longevity is tempting. Um, the beehive for generating bees so that we can keep getting other stuff. I think that that's what I would rather do of the two choices there. Okay. Bees can really come in handy with this fight too. Well, this just got serious with him having a sigil for fledgling. That's not good. Um, we did not draw a strong hand to stop something like that. Um, so card cutting almost sounds like the order of the day. Um, hmm, let me think. Let me think. Okay. So I could get the rabbit, or the rabbit, the raccoon on the board. But anything we generate here is just going to get lost. So I'm thinking about cutting one of these strange frogs. Um, Then maybe playing the raccoon. Um, and maybe using a rabbit pelt to block some of the damage. Huh. Let's do a card cut. 
and let's then put our let's say our raccoon down and we will use these other two cards to block damage for the first hand and we'll play our opossum whoever most applicable next if I have to I'll skip a turn as well so alright um yeah maybe we can send our possum off after our leaping trap here um I'm gonna go ahead and take a tooth just to be extra safe here and I guess I want to get him to skip his turn and we'll sacrifice our possum to the trap just so we can have two lanes of attack open up. Alright. So let's go here. Alright, we got the sacrificial raccoon. Um, that's good enough to get us to the next phase, I think. Um, hopefully I'm reading that right. Sometimes we get a little crossed with uh, being able to read it, but yep, we're good. We're only going to have two pelts to trade in, so this might be a little bit shaky. Um, let's see how it goes. Okay, it's a lot of shaky. Um, so we have us a bifurcated wolf cub and a wolf that's stinky. We've got us a mole that's going to be blocking damage. Um, actually, let's see. I assume I can still kill that. Um, Let's see, this one's reflecting power in front of it. The sacrifice or sacrificing raccoon is more important than the two, so I'm tempted to take out this column so I can keep it, and the raccoon will take out that column. Um, so let's do that, and I can get some of these guys on the board. Like, I think I can get the bat, and I could get this other guy on the board too. He's only against the porcupine. Um, so let's do that, and we will play this guy against the porcupine. Okay. Okay. Okay, not perfectly ideal. We're out of cards, just about. Um, well, I may have just lost, just about. I mean, we're so close. It's hard to tell, but it's not looking good. Um, yep, I think that is going to be it. Nothing uh, to recover here with. Wow. I thought I was having a pretty strong playthrough, but maybe wrong. Um, I'm really curious to see what raccoon strategies work best because I, I was feeling like it was pretty magical, but I just don't uh, don't see it happening for me personally. So let's go back to the insect deck. It's just so, so powerful. I think that I could really get this. Let's do um, kind of the same situation we had before. And... Maybe tip scales would be better. We'll do that. I think that the more difficult was starting to get genuinely more difficult there. That was only the second boss fight. It was just really rough. Didn't even make it to the uh, prospector. All right, insect focus deck here. Um. Millworm's kind of situational, but I do like it a lot. So I'm thinking the Mantis and the Millworm. Um, I don't see a whole lot of need for the Warren um, on anything. So let's go with the Mantis and the Millworm. Okay. Now, let's see. Could sacrifice the Millworm put it on the skunk since it has stinky and sacrifice a skunk at a later date um that would be interesting it's too bad i can't hit both a sigil swap and that at the same time 
let's uh let's go this way we'll see what kind of uh wares we have here all right scavenger mm, i guess we'll take it don't see that being super useful with the insect build but we'll take it just to have something Ooh, a wolf cup. Alright. I guess Mantis in the correct lane would be a good idea. Um, we want it to be, I guess, right over here to strike it at the right time. You know, it's not ideal placement before it's uh, bifurcated. Oh, and we have an alpha incoming. Um... Let's do this, and we'll let the Alpha take out the Mantis, and we'll try to get it, hopefully, within our next turn. Um, so we have enough to get the Ant Queen buffed up using the Mealworm as part of its power-up. There we go. She'll do a pretty big hit on it. And our... Actually, it'll be enough to take it out. As I say, in our work ant and finish it off, but matter of fact, we'll just get it right now. Good. Alright, bone blood and single blood. Hmm. Let's go with the triple. Ooh, a great one. This could be fun. Wondering if we should put its powers on say the mantis or something. Um, that would be pretty funny. Or a bifurcated great white would be pretty wild too. I think that would be hard to uh, beat. Um, I did mention putting the millworm on a skunk and that feels pretty good but I kind of want to try something wacky here and we'll put the great white's powers on the uh, on the mantis, why not? <laughs> it's not my usual route, but you know, there's a chance we'll get another mantis and then we can do a fungus event or um, put something wacky on it too. And I don't know, I'm just feeling kind of experimental with today's stream, I guess. Okay. Um, we could get this mantis going right away, and it'll be waterborne, so it shouldn't be killable. It'll be doing just as much damage as these sparrows. Alright, now there's a cuckoo that's incoming, um, so we kind of need to block it off before it gets to be a problem. So let's do this flying ant over here. We'll save up our millworm for uh, whatever the next thing we draw is. Oh, an ant queen. Just about play it. Not quite yet, but soon. Alright, time for our ant queen. Alright, a lot of power on the board now. <laughs> Excellent. Could have had some more excess damage if I'd drawn a squirrel instead. I forgot I had that worker ant in my hand and I kind of just rushed. Oh well. Hey, a golden pelt. Perfect. Wolf Cub incoming. And it has Burrower, so we can kind of place our cards wherever we want. Um, it'd be fun to get that skunk powered up by the Millworm, but not really going to matter. We'll just put down our Golden Pelt so the Wolf Cub has something it can 
hit a little bit. And um, now maybe the time to play one of these other guys, but um, we do have a stinky skunk and really not a good situation here. So let's just go ahead and pull a tooth. That other wolf is going to be a problem. And another wolf cub. Wow. This is uh, turning out pretty bad. Okay. Um, yeah, not a good situation. So, I mean, we can play a stinky skunk. But it's not going to last. And uh, can get us a flying ant on the board. It has some powered upness to it. Um, but yeah, I think we're already kind of lost here. Had to get really lucky with whatever card we pull out over here. All right, an ant queen. Um, now she'd have enough power to power up this guy and take on the wolf. We'd have to use up the rest of our items, however. Um, which isn't the best thing, but let's just go ahead and do it for the heck of it. We don't have anything better to do, so let's do that. And that gives us a worker ant, which in turn could be put down to face off with the wolf and take it off the board. And that may actually turn it around for us. I really did not see that recovery coming, so... Um, I'm actually a little bit shocked here. We're going to get a lot of excess damage on this now that we have the Mantis on the board too. Wow. Excellent. Hopefully we'll get a second Golden Pelt by the time this is all said and done. Ooh. Interesting picks here. A mud turtle, a raven egg, and an alpha. Um, let's see. Could have us like an alpha ant queen. That would be interesting. Um, or... Well, that'd be really interesting because it would spawn an alpha flying... Or an alpha um, ant. And then a mud turtle could have um, this... Uh, this sigil make its way onto something else. Now, here's a thought too, is, let's see. What if, I mean, I could get this on here and the fledgling onto the flying ant and make it an ant queen, um, which would then, I think, spawn worker ants that would grow up. I'm not positive if it would carry the uh, fledgling across. I can't remember if it'll do that or not. We gotta check it out. Uh, Mud Turtle um, being armored and passing that on to the ants so they can take an additional strike. That's really tempting. These are also hard. I think I might take the Alpha booster though. Um, and whether I can play it, you know, like, well, I mean, I can do it now. So let's put it on our. Let's see. I think we want to do it on our Ant Queen. That way it'll have worker ants that can boost things and that'll leave us, you know, a couple of boosters available. That paired with the mantis with its multi-directional strike would be a pretty big deal. Okay, um, neither of these heads really make sense, um, for now. So, the body, the burrower, isn't very handy. I think I want to go with the canine head just to have something complete and who knows maybe i'll get a canine card here in a moment this isn't the most ideal situation these totem battles just make everything so much trickier you just never know what's coming at you all right ant queen let's see we could get her on the board and she'd boost things up right away and, um, yeah, why not? Okay, and yeah, we'll wait till the next turn and we'll get 
that other ant on the board and it will take out the coyote, presumably. Okay, uh, let's see. Ah, it didn't take the alpha symbol. I thought it would. Um, that's okay. We can put it here and it'll boost up the ant queen enough to take out that coyote column. That'll be fine. I don't want to lose our mantis um, to the prospector's pickaxe here in a moment. think of all the bosses that's like the lamest thing like being able to destroy your cards like that like just a little bit overpowered all right I guess I should play Aramantis it's not the most glorious move here but gotta get something on the board I guess okay we have a flying ant now and nothing we can really do in the moment. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll just keep what we have going on here. All right, we should be getting a bundle of cards from the pack mule dying. So let's see if we can get something else going. Um, can get the, the golden pelt now so the bloodhound has something to hit on and also get a flying skunk. Or flying skunk, flying ant, and uh, yeah, yeah, not super, super useful. And I made a mistake of playing those in the wrong order. Um, but I could play a skunk, and that would reoccupy the bloodhound at least for that turn. So okay, well we got enough out of that hand. I think that um, we may be able to have a pretty strong recovery here with the turkey vulture um, as soon as I can get rid of the adder so let's see wild bull could just about be put down on there or we could let the mantis take it out and let the bloodhound attack our golden pelt and that would free up some space on the board in another turn or so so let's just let that happen I guess oh the wolf cubs incoming now all right, things are getting serious, so let's see. Really need to get some cards down here. All right, a mealworm. Um, we could put that down and have the turkey vulture consume it, and it would last two rounds against the bloodhound. Or we could use it to get the wild bull on the board, take out the skunk, um, in fact, I think I'll go ahead and do that, and that way it'll take out our Bloodhound situation, and after it's gone, we'll use the Turkey Vulture in the next turn. There we go. Okay, and time for our Turkey Vulture to join the party. I think that we're going to get enough damage to pull ahead. Yep, excellent. That was tough. All right, let's see. A coyote might be a good thing to add here. I don't really feel like putting the ringworm on could help any. I mean, we could try boosting it up getting the people at the fire sick um so maybe we could do that it's a little bit unorthodox but maybe i'll get lucky and i get like a super ringworm with like a lot of attack power in fact we'll head straight there after the cave event so we definitely need to take advantage of those boosts if we can do it all right i think two of a kind might be our route since we have mostly that and six health? Uh, I don't think so. This is probably our best bet. It's not super strong, but we'll try. Okay, we got lucky. 
All right, an adder that sacrifices, or and it also has a morsel on it. Ooh, a raccoon that's corpse eater and hoarder as well. A black goat that would auto deploy and get us an item, and have blood on it. Hmm. Well, that's pretty tempting. Um, all these are tempting. The adder. Maybe a little bit less so, um, but having a morsel on it, being able to add to um, both, you know, that's not horrible. Being sac you know, being able to be sacrificed over and over, would be pretty nice. Um, I'm kind of thinking the black goat may be our best bet though, because we get an item out of this and raccoon's nice and be able to find a card um but i'm not really going for like a bone build per se here so i think i'll go with the black goat if i get something powerful i uh will definitely enjoy having this okay let's see if we can get us our um boosted ringworm here okay let's see if they'll eat it oh they did they fell for the bait. <laughs> okay. I see another fireplace up that way, so it's a choice between that and a duplication move, so we'll see what we can do here in a moment. Alright, Black Goat's going to get us items, and um, we could sacrifice it. However, we need to kind of get something down on the board here. These both have Guardian on them, too. Um, playing a Golden Pelt's not going to help anything. And the Black Goat wouldn't be hurt anyway since they're airborne. Um, yeah, maybe we should get it on the board just for the sake of getting the item and seeing what the item is. <laughs> Another Black Goat. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just stick with this. All right. Ooh, good, an ant queen. Um, now, that could be handy. So let's do something like this. We'll put her in the middle so that we leave some room. And um, I don't think we have anything else we can do here. Um, well, I've got to prevent some damage, though, unfortunately. I don't think I'll be able to here. Let me think. I can't play the Black Goat without blood, fortunately. So, this B plus that flying ant, they're going to put two damage on the board. And I should have played the Ant Queen way over here. I think I would have had a chance, but... No, I think I made a mistake, and they're not going to be able to uh, be recovered now. I could sacrifice her and put her over here, I suppose, or put the worker ant over there. I think I want to have to to have a chance. And um, even then, it's not going to work. So, yeah, I think even then I'm still in trouble because they're going to do damage down anyways. Yep, there's no coming out of that one. Okay, that's just how it goes. It really seems that the pelts don't block airborne. That's the main problem that we're missing here. Alright, I don't see anything worth duplicating. Um, I'm not too torn on doing a cave event, so let's just go to the fire since we know we'll be able to boost something. Alright, uh, let's get the wolf cub. We might put its sigil on something else, or if we get um, a dam builder sigil, we could use that. Here we go. No hungry people, so let's go with Millworm. We'll get it boosted up a bunch, and hopefully we'll have a uh, attack power one on this next fireplace, and that can help us boost a certain card to an unbelievably high power level. Alright, we have Burrower on this one, and I think we should just get our Wolf Cub straight on the board to have a chance here. Oh, 
Are you kidding me? Rattlers, run away. Or adders, rather. Um, I guess it's time to get Ant Queen on the board with uh, using our goat up. There we go. Okay. And um, fortunately, that's, I think, about all I can do. So I'm going to lose my wolf right off the bat. And nothing I can do about it. At least the adders are low damage overall. And I do have um, some other ant types to add on over here. So let's do... We'll take out this guy over here. And, um, you know, if I would played it over there, actually, I would have... There we go. Okay. So let's say if I would played it over there, I actually would have, I think, won. But... I forgot that they also had um, Burr on, so that was going to protect me from losing. Alright, exactly as planned. Okay. Let's see, what do we get here? Ooh, potential tree blood here. And we do have black goat, so let's do it. And grizzly. Awesome. Now, if I get to eat that. Millworm as well. Oh, awesome. Power up. Yes. We're putting that on the millworm for sure. Oh, man. Somebody's going to get plus two and plus six um, when they get to consume that. That's going to be amazing. Okay. Beehives and Rattlers. No sign of our little guy here. So, we could put down our skunk, and that would be enough off of the rattler. It would survive two turns, and we'll have to hold off on the millworm until subsequent round. Um, I guess we'll draw from here, and we still don't have enough to play the grizzly. So, yeah, we're going to have to get another bone and another squirrel. I think that'll be enough. We're running dreadfully low here, though. Um, I think we have, like, quite literally just enough to skin by and kill that rattler um, with our grizzly. It's really close, so I really don't like it. Um, so let's do this, and then we'll do this, and uh, now we have a 6 and 12 Grizzly. And I think that we may get an okay luck here because this adder is going to move over and it'll eliminate both those adders. Um, let me think. I think I should draw a squirrel and I'll put it here to block the rattler that's going to come down. Okay. Um, maybe that was the wrong move. So, I swear I thought guardian was going to mean that the adder moved over. Oh, that's not good. But they're not going to be generating a lot of damage for a while, so maybe I can use the beehive um, here in just a moment. It'll take them a while to undo the uh, damage I've been doing to them. I think I have... If I play this, I could get an item. Um, perhaps that could be something that helps me. Alright, a pair of scissors. So I'm pretty desperate, so let's stop this guy and... Um, we'll ring the bell, and we'll probably sacrifice our black goat in the next turn. Okay, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do like so. And that was not the right move. That's, that's the end of me. Um, I think I'm going to have to play it and put down the flying ant, because if I don't, that... Rattler is going to move down and take me out. So, ooh, 
poor decision there. Poor decision. Hopefully I can make up for it. I think I want to be running out of time. Okay. Um... And let's do the Ant Queen here. All right. Go ahead, put me on my misery. All right, good. I finally got you. Good. This is not an easy one, I'll tell you that. I uh, was kind of running out of ideas over and over. Won't be able to put much more power on the board by looking at things either. Okay, um, I think we have enough time here before starvation settles in. Okay, oh, let's see. Well, with that on the board, um, I may not win, so just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, offer to uh, surrender. All right. Let's do, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sigils. Uh, we'll do two of, two of a can, who knows. All right, good, we passed. Passed it with flying colors. A stinky alpha that also has morsel. That's an interesting combo. Ooh, a ringworm auto deploys and is worthy sacrifice. Um... Interesting. Um, and the magpie. I'm thinking the stinky alpha might be nice to also consume it and get stuff off of it. Plus, it costs bone, and we don't have much cost bone right now other than the millworm, so that would be pretty nice. It's going to be a hard sacrifice here, though. I'm not sure what I'd want to put up. I really don't like the idea of having to give up my pelt. But perhaps my skunk would be a good idea. I think I'm going to go with the skunk. It's kind of hard when you draw a skunk in your first hand and have nowhere to use it. Um, Alright, power up time. Who do we want to put some might on? We can put it on the mantis, and that'll give us a lot of power. Um, or we could put an iron black goat and auto deploys. Hmm. On the mantis, for every up one, that gives us, you know, the possibility of uh, getting, you know, strikes in both directions. So it's kind of like plus four if we get both of these. So I think we'll go with the mantis. There we go. Six striking power. Um, overall, I think it, it's hard to say no to that. And if we eventually get us a sigil that's better than the um, bone collecting thing here, we'll be in a really good situation. Okay, not a bad start. Um, let's see if we can get us our mantis on the board. Um, that's bifurcated strike, I think that we would automatically go to the next phase and we shouldn't have anything in its way, so let's just go ahead and do it. I think I made a very good decision earlier when I uh, selected that for the sigil, or for the uh, power up, so. Let me see what's coming next. Okay, um, so the Mantis is going to win this right out the bat. Um, I think I'll put it on the Wolf Cub just for giggles. Um, it's not going to matter, but we'll have it join in on the fun of doing the win.
Okay. Awesome. That was a pretty good win. I'm starting to feel some confidence in this deck. Um, I don't know if it's worth getting Millworm since we already have quite a big boost. Getting another Ringworm sounds like a way so. And River Snapper. Uh, you know, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do it. Okay, so let's see. Fungus events. Well, now I kind of wish I had picked a millworm, but I mean, wouldn't have had. I would have had a chance to boost it actually. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, now I don't have but just the one item, and I don't have anything but the black goat bringing in items. Um, as far as duplicates go, I could get an Ant Queen duplicate. So that would be rather interesting and have a really strong one that has a lot of carrying power. Or I could just keep two separate ones and maybe duplicate something else. Um, finding this would be a hard decision. Maybe the Mantis duplicate could be our top move, though. Um, and I've only got one pelt to trade in, so it's a little bit rough going this way. I think I am going to go to the right, though. I think it's going to lead overall to better end results. So let's do it. Okay. Um, let's see. This is one of those question card ones that's going to transform into other things. So let's go with it, and we'll just see how it turns out. Okay, um, we could duplicate it. Looks like there's a funny glitch going on with it. Make it into something stronger. I don't know if it's eligible. Um, or we could boost up our millworm again to a ridiculous height and whoever gets to use it would be really strong. Oh, we can make a second millworm. That's what I want to do. Um, Cause then we'd be able to boost two separate things for only a cost of four bones. I don't know why I didn't see it, but that's going to be way better than I think anything else we could do. Even if it comes out like 1-5, it's still a big boost. 1-6, so I'll take that. You did a pretty good job there, Slimy. I forget his name. Alright. Let's see. Porcupine, Rabbit, Wild Bull, and Frozen Possum blocking our way. We gotta get rid of that wild bull pretty quickly. He won't be able to run away if we can get him in the first turn. Um, and our mantis could just about do it, but he's gonna hop over. Um, our mantis is waterborne, so I could put him in front of the porcupine, um, and that would be enough damage, I think, to get us going where we need. However, I could put the mantis down, have him attack there, and then also hit the frozen possum. This is a hard decision. Um, I think I need to align it so that it can attack the wild bull, though, ultimately. That's going to be our safest bet. Okay. And let's see. Oh, the wild bull moved in a direction I did not anticipate. I thought he was going to move over here, so that's not good. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see our damage on the board. I wish it was a little bit better with the UI to see it. Um, I mean, I can see it tilted down a bit, but can't quite see what's going on. Mantis is going to take out the rabbit. Um, and we're going to get four damage total, so that's just just about unacceptable for the amount of damage we're about to take on here. Um, the Ant Queen can't withstand the Wild Bull's blow either. Um, so I'm thinking I'm just going to have to do something like put down a squirrel and let the Wild Bull take it out. And we'll make up for it with our 
next turn with the Mantis. Um, and the Wild Bull will get everything in the way, and the Mantis will take it out. Alright, and a Wolf Cub. Excellent. So I don't have a Squirrel, and I think I just made a mistake there. I should have drawn another Squirrel and blocked it. So um, I think we're just going to tie for damage here, roughly. Oh, I didn't see the elk coming down. Yep. That's not looking like the best situation now. Um, so, Mantis will take out the Wild Bull. The Porcupine will do a plus one. The elk will be sitting there. Um, I don't see any way I can come out ahead, unfortunately. Um, enough to make a difference. If I could get the Ant Queen on the board to power up the Frozen Possum, that might be just enough to make a difference. Um, I mean, I can do that. Let me think. Where would she come into play? Maybe in the middle of the board here? Or, I mean, on the right side? So she would hit the Elk, and um, that Wild Bull is still going to be there, but the frozen possum will also be plus one when it comes out. So maybe, maybe it could work. I just don't think I'm doing a good path here. Um, let's see. I'm possibly overthinking it as well. Let's just uh, try it out. Ah, it's the Hydrock. Ah, I wish I had been paying attention. That was the possibility here um so i will take out that first one but we're still going to get undone by that other card there is a worker ant here in my hand now but i would have to sacrifice i yeah okay i don't think i'm gonna win that's just how it is Okay, so close. I think I, I just made one or two small mistakes. I didn't position my uh, Mantis properly in the beginning, and that was the big mistake. So let's see. I guess we do need to trade in these teeth, or else we're going to be holding on to them for forever. So let's go that route. I don't see a whole lot of need to do the fungal event anyways. Okay, and a wolf pelt. And let's just go ahead and clear them out. We'll get the full range next time we visit the uh, pelt trader. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is not a good set to sacrifice sigils for. I um, really don't like it. Let's see. Putting this on a grizzly, it would get stronger. It would be pretty interesting. Um, let's see. This river snapper is 1 in 6, though. Same as our millworm. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Sacrificing the wolf cub so something else could grow stronger. I'm trying to think of... I mean, maybe putting that on the millworm makes sense. I mean, it have a lot of power. It's even approaching stronger than a wolf as it is, so... Maybe I'll put it on our flying ant and be a little bit... Well, it'll turn into an ant queen, though, so let's just do that. I think that'll settle it. Having it do that and then generate a ant that I can have, I think makes a lot of good use there. All right, these raven eggs are gonna attack right away, so we gotta get rid of that alpha. Um, flying ant's gonna grow into something stronger. Um, so I'm kinda like, so be it. Let's let the golden belt block the alpha. And actually we have enough to get the millworm on the board and it could attack the alpha and de-energize it. Um, 
in a couple of turns, so maybe that will be a good idea. We're fixing to have a ant queen as well, so there we go. Um, yeah. I think we just carry on for the moment. Oh boy, Raven's too much power on the board. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Um, let's see. Now if we sacrifice the millworm right now, we'd get a 1 in 10, or a 2 in 10 river snapper. Um, it's not going to be enough to turn things around. I think, I think that we are just in another bad situation. Um, these airborne ravens, man, I'm telling you, what troublemakers. Nothing to block them with. Uh, just trying to think, is there any way I can weasel out of this? But they've already got, they'll go down to... I guess um, three and two respectively, which is five. And that is just not enough to do anything against that. Oh, well, um, Aunt Queen can't beat the alpha on her own in one turn. So it's unfortunately I didn't get another ant related card. So, I guess, um, really, without further ado, we need to just play, because I don't think there's anything we can do. We'll sacrifice our mealworm just for the funsies of it. Yeah, this is a really strong river sniper, probably the strongest I've ever had. So at least that's a little bit of an accomplishment. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Yeah, they, they got the excess damage on that one. Man, I want to look up some strategies for beating uh, this point level because the challenge is so, so difficult with the uh, current set of um, difficulty enhancements I have on. Man, I have to think about that. Okay, well, thanks for watching. This has been STR Inc. You follow me on Twitch and Twitter at STR Inc. And I'll have a replay on YouTube soon. Thanks, and have a good day.